almost that manual transaxle you see on the screen is just about the same one as that one over there, only that one's a four speed, and the one we're going to be looking at up here is a five speed. Okay, and uh, so you might notice, do you notice anything peculiar about that transaxle, particularly in this area right here? Do you notice anything strange about it? Doesn't have the stub that goes up in the, you know, for the, uh, the pilot bearing. Now, the one out there does that Quincy pulled out. That, because he had, we actually had to show him the bearing and all that. But a lot of these don't have that stem shaft that goes up in the pilot bushing in the back of the crankshaft. That one there, the one this picture doesn't. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, this one here, we basically got a clutch that's operated with what? What's the, uh, what's the mechanism by which this clutch operates? Cable. Now, Quincy, what operates the clutch on the one you just pull the transmission out of and put it back in? <coughs> Remember the slave cylinder that you had to hook up to the clutch? That's a hydraulic clutch. And on that one, it gets its fluid from the regular brake master cylinder. Okay. Now, what do you see here? Quincy, does this look familiar? Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Okay. And you know what all these parts are, right? Yeah, that transaxle goes in there. Now, Quincy, uh, unless somebody really gets on it, is going to have the distinction of uh, being the first one to pull the transaxle out of this uh, board and put it back in. Everybody's supposed to do this, by the way. Do this. All right. Clutch disc, flywheel assembly, release bearing, pressure plate. Everybody's seen all these parts before. That's it. Now, this is not very complicated, you can tell. There's just not a whole lot to this. You know, just about anybody could fix this, you know, if they had just a little bit of practice, you could probably just throw this bad boy together and get it working just like it was supposed to. Uh-huh. Nothing to it. How many parts is there in there? How many parts are there? 73. Wait a minute. 22. What's the highest number you see on there anywhere? 22. 122 parts, you know. And this is the, one of the least complicated parts of that vehicle. You got me? Now, I want you to pay particular attention. Do you see this item here anywhere pictured on your test? Oh, my eyes. No. All right. All right. Study this very close. You know what this is, right? That's a shift fork. That's a shift fork. That's a shift fork. Shift forks move the synchronizers, and that's what basically puts it in its gears. What happens if you put a, a manual transmission or a manual transaxle in two gears at once? Uh, ow. It's locked up. Ow. It just locks up. Yeah. As a matter of fact, some of your procedures, whenever you need to take the nut off the back shaft that holds the bearing in, they will tell you in the shop manual to put the transmission in two gears at once to keep it from turning. And when you do that, that way you can break that nut loose without having to fight it. All right. Now, what is this? What are these items right here? The bearing. What, would, what part? What would you call this part? Huh? That's like the spider. Huh? That's like the spider. Yeah, he's got a good answer there, spider gears. I'm always waving this around everybody's face, but these are the spider gears right here. That's the differential. Why is it necessary? Huh? To move the, uh, the rotation from this way to that way. Well, the reason it has to be on there is because if you're making a curve, the inside wheel is turning faster or slower than the outside wheel. If you're going in a curve to the left, the inside wheel is going to turn slower than the outside wheel because the outside wheel is going to more ground in it. Yeah. I had a guy in here one time, and he took he was wanting to he was always pedaling around with his car, racing it down a hole and all that kind of stuff. And so he got his car and he welded those spider gears all together, which is a lot of times what people do, so they have perfect positive traction, you know, so they won't have one wheel spinning and they'll have it takes off quicker and all that kind of thing. And so he welded them together and he was just driving it around like that. And whenever he made a curve of any kind, it was a, you know, he was actually sliding one wheel and dragging the other, or spinning one wheel and dragging the other. It was a mess. But that's what those gears are in there for. Did you know that even little tiny radio control cars have got those spider gears in them? Mm -hmm. I've actually tried one car and I thought it was Now, uh, and this shaft right here is what those little gears are. Where do they, what do these gears connect to? These right here, this little shaft right here is going through the differential case, which is down here. There's your ring gear, right? 
Got that? These two right here go to the what? Follow this to its conclusion, guys. What goes through here? CV axle. CV axle goes through there, through there, clicks into there, into that gear. That gear is inside here, goes through there, and it actually cooks, and there's another one on the other side, CV axle on the other side. That's a ship rail right over there. Now, something else that I was talking about, you remember when I told you I had this escort that, didn't, that wouldn't shift, and I went in there and I replaced the speedometer drive gear? What's the difference between a drive gear and a driven gear? The drive gear is the one that's producing the power, the driven gear is the one that's being driven. This gear right here on that automatic transaxle I was working on was plastic. And it got loose and it wasn't driving the speedo anymore. Now what this right here, what's that right there? Let's see what is it? Why would a transaxle have a spark plug in it, Steve? Okay, right here. Come on. Give me something. Did you just have your hands on this this morning? Yeah. What is it? What's the That's purpose of the speedometer? That's a speedometer, and it hooks into this gear right here. It's on the, and this part right down here is called the final drive. Okay. All right. Now then, shift mechanism is right here. Does this look familiar? What's he? See that? Oh yeah, this is fine. There you go. Now what is this right here? Anybody know? What would you have connected to a manual transmission or transaxle that was electrical? Electrical connectors connected to a manual transmission would feed what? Critical thinking, y'all. I will not spoon feed you all of this. You're going to think. Okay. Come on. Madden? What do you think? He's not going to find it in there. Why would I have electrical connectors hooked to the manual transmission? Anybody heard of backup lights? Duh! <laughs> Everybody's sitting here going, wow, this is something complicated that I'm going to have to be told about. All you have to do is think, okay? All right, so this is this right here, this little bucket, there's your shifter. It actually turns, it turns back and forth and it pushes this way. And there's your little backup light switch, got it? There's your boot, there's your shifter. See how that's put together? Alright. Now look at this. See right here? What do you got here? Now you got a diagram just like this in your handout. And I gave you that handout for a reason because you may wind up you might want to find in some questions out of that handout on your final exam. So be really careful to hold on to it. That part right there is pretty important. As a matter of fact, you couldn't operate this thing without every single one of these components. Got it? Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about this. Where does the power come in to this thing? This is a cross section of it, so you can see the gear. Huh? You might see right there. There you go, that's a good answer. This is the bell housing where it bolts up the engine. What part is this again? What part is that? Spider uh, gear, differential, exactly. You see the axles click in here. And these right here. And there's your what is that gear? You should know what that gear is. No. Not planetary gear. No, this one doesn't have planetary gear. This one's not an automatic transmission. Alright, you see that? What gear does that one mesh with? First. Nope. Overdrive? It's reverse gear. Nope. Four nope. gear. What is it? Yeah. Neutral? What gear, what does this gear do? It drives everything. So what What do you call the gear that drives everything? Ring gear. I call it the ring gear. Okay, the ring gear has a gear that drives it, and what is that name of that gear? As in ring gear and start to the P. Planetary. No, but that's not on it. Pinion. Duh. 
See what you're doing? Y'all are sitting here like brain dead because tomorrow's the 4th of July. Now this is going to be, I'm hoping he'll let us go when we're through with this test. Ain't happening. We're going to work this afternoon, okay? The college is not closed on Friday, on the third afternoon before the 4th of July. So the 4th falls on a Friday anyway. Alright, so here we go. Why don't you have to today? Right here? So here's what we got. We got the, we got the ring here, and we got a pinion. So after everything else is done, before the power can get out of the wheel, it has to come through that gear, does it not? Yes. That's right. Okay, so you might notice on that one right there, and I'm showing you, I had shown you the other day uh, the manual, the, when we looked at that video about the uh, the rear wheel drive, and I'm going to rear wheel drive. We're going to lay it up here on the bench in a minute, and I'm going to show you guys how it works. Uh, so you'll be able to do that, because part of what you're going to need to do for your manual transmission final is you're going to show me power flow on this transmission, both of them. You know I mean? I'm going to show it to you, but I actually have people sometimes that want me to walk them through it and then give them a good grade on their final. That ain't happening either. You know, if you can't do it, you crash. That's all right. Now, this is neutral. You notice you got power coming in from the engine. Now, these are the carrier bearings, these cone-shaped bearings. And you basically, the way you do that, you're actually going to put some shims behind the cups on these bearings. That's how you're going to set the preload on them. The preload is how much pressure is on them before they ever turn. Because you don't want these shafts doing anything except turning. You don't want to move it around back and forth for the whole shaft. All right, power's coming in here, and it's going nowhere. No way. See, it's just going here. Everything's free willing. There's nothing being transmitted to this. Okay. Now, then, let me see if I can make it take again. Whoops. First gear. Look how it gets there. First gear, you got power coming in here. It's going through this shaft to that big gear. So you've got a little gear here, pull in a big gear, the big gear is transmitting that. So you notice this little shift fork that you just not pictured here moved this synchronizer sleeve toward first gear. And that actually made first gear a part of this shaft. All the rest of these are freewheeling on that shaft right now. Notice that one's in its neutral position. That one up there is in its neutral position. That's the shaft that does a different job. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, if you wanted to know about reverse gear, reverse gear is that one right there. And reverse gear, and that actually moves into contact with this, and it, and it goes out that way, but it turns the opposite direction. Anyway, I'll show you that in a minute, too. So, first gear goes through that little gear, through this gear, out through the ring gear and the pinion, and out through the CV axle. Second gear, look what happened. You see what happened? This moved back, right? So power now is going through this gear down here. Now these gears, I'm going to show you something else that you need to know and you need to understand. Don't forget this because it's liable to cost you later if you do. You see these two gears right here? They are not meshed together at all. They're spinning next to each other. They won't have any contact between them at all until this reverse gear slides into contact with both of them. You're adding a third gear that makes everything turn backwards, right? All right, so right here we got this going through here. Now look at the difference. This gear was small and that one was large. This one was a little bit bigger and this one here is a little bit smaller. Excuse me, this one's a little bit bigger and that one's a little bit smaller. I was in the wrong place. So that's what second is. So now what's going to happen when we put it in third? Somebody tell me. The uh, gears are going to be the same. What? The gears are going to be the same. No, they're not. Look. This one here came back to the neutral position. Then that one there clicked back in. Now you've got an even larger gear pulling a smaller gear. You see how that, you got two reverse Christmas trees. See, you got, they go bigger, 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 smaller, smaller, smaller. I was thinking fourth gear. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. That right there is third gear. You better be able to do this without supervision. So that's why I'm giving you the handout so you'll be able to burn this in because you need to understand it. This shift fork moved that forward, and it made that gear become a part of the shaft. And so this gear right here is driven by the engine, is now turning that gear there, which is your, what gear, what's the name of this gear? Pinion. Pinion, ring gear, that's being turned by that. Okay, now then, fourth gear. Look at fourth gear. What's happened now? They flipped back. Why is, how do we get one to one out of fourth gear? We're getting a one-to-one -one ratio out of fourth gear. Because the twin gear is the same diameter as the outstanding performance. Bobby, you got you got this one and that gear, those two gears are the same. 
not there. This one here is not engaged at all at this point. And what do you think that one up there does? Reverse? No. Reverse is this one down here. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, sure. That's fifth gear. Watch what happens there. You see this? Power is coming. They had to flip it over so they could show you. Power is coming in here. It's going here through this shaft. And it's basically going out that gear there. And that's basically, that's the same gear that you had before. So what about the seats? No, there ain't no seats on this one. Five gear, five gear. Five gear. You're making that up as you go. We try to be funny. Right. Ah, they do, but this one don't. Uh, this right here. And why do you have so many gears nowadays on cars? Uh, fuel economy. And also, you want to keep it in this power band. You know what I mean? That's important. Mike has six your, speeds. Your truck's got six speeds. It's got a, it's got a six speed transmission in it. Motorcycle's got six gears. Have you ever counted the shifts? Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know how many it's got? All right, right here. Now, watch this right here. See that right there? Notice how that moved? That put it in reverse? And now that's moving the opposite direction. That that gear meshed that gear with that one, and so basically it's got this gear turned in the opposite direction it was because you've added a third gear. You got these two gears meshed together with a third gear, and it makes it go backwards. And I can show you that that one doesn't have a fifth gear, that little transaxle over there that I got sitting on the thing, but it does. It's really really similar to this in a lot of ways. Okay, so here we go. We're going to road test it first. We're going to correct fluid level. Now my dad, you know, worked on vehicles for 30 something years and he, he knew what to do and what not to do. And I mentioned this before, but somebody would bring a transmission to him out of a car and these were transmissions he knew really, really well. And they'd bring it in the back of a pickup truck and they'd say, can you rebuild this transmission? It was a manual transmission. He'd say, no, I'm not going to touch it. And they said, what do you mean you're not going to touch it? He said, I have to have it in the car where I can drive it and hear what it sounds like. I'm not going to do anything. The reason for that is, these gears can look really, really good if they're helical cut, and they, they just about all of them are now that he's kept for reverse. You can look good and sound horrible. I mean, you can look at those gears and not even see anything wrong with them at all, but they can whine and sing and carry on. And so he had fell in that trap a time or two early in his career where he would replace everything he saw wrong, and then they say, no, you need to work on it some more. It's still making noise. So he wanted to hear the noise before he ever tore into it. See what I mean? The point is, he couldn't test drive it, so you know, he wouldn't build it. And some of them would get some bad reason about that, but he didn't care. <laughs> he let it go. Ro uh, verify correct fluid level. Now, what's the danger of having a manual transmission or a manual transaxle that's got a fluid leak? I mean, after all, we're going to put fluid in it every so often. We'll be every time we change it all. The wrong fluid. No, the fluid gets to leak a little faster. One day it's liable to run out. Because you're, you're not going to always be able to keep up with that. You know, we were talking a while ago, I was talking about how you don't need to change the customer's radio station or the one that you like to listen to. And, uh, you know, Tristan was saying, well, I always just remember what one was on and put it back. Well, that sounds good, but you're going to forget sooner or later, and customers don't like that. Some of them are a little bit irritated about it. Some of them get raging mad about it. But I just turn the radio off. That's what I mean. If they got a problem with me turning the radio off, then they got a problem that's bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, if I'm if you jack around with a radio, sooner or later they're gonna somebody's gonna get one back, and they wanted to hear gospel, and you got it on blue funk or whatever. Boom, 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 you know they don't like that. And that makes them think you're playing and not fixing their car. Okay, transaxle leaks gonna have to be fixed if you find that shifting problems. Here's another thing: what transmission fluid does that transmission take? It, ATF. Automatic transmission fluid, Mercon. What's gonna happen? You think if you put something in there? I'm, I don't trust that. I'm going to put something that's a little heavier. What's going to happen then? Yeah, gear clash. It's going to have gear clash because those synchronizers are supposed to actually bite through that all onto the cone of the gear that they're going into and bring it to the same speed. If they can't do that because the oil is too thick, it's going to go brrrr. If it does that enough times, you wind up with no teeth anywhere. Alright. And I'm going to tell you about this guy that, uh, do you remember, uh, there was a guy that used to be on the TV years ago that did commercials and all, and his name was Red Holland. He's a real, he was around this part of the country for years. But anyway, he advertised for the place where I work, and they gave him a demo that was an 86 Ford Bronco. It was brand new. So he's driving this thing down the road. Well, they gave it to me to begin with, and they says, it's got no reverse at all, which is a manual transmission with no reverse. 
Hmm. You put it in reverse and it didn't go anywhere, it just sits here. Boom, boom, boom. Every other gear worked fine, but you couldn't back up on it. That's back in the extension housing area, so got it up on the left, I pull the extension housing off, and I look up in there, and all the little teeth from the sink, you know, where the uh, synchronized sleeve slides up on that gear were sheared off, and they were laying in the bottom. Now, how in the world do you think that happened? First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Oh, Thanks. I've got another gear to go. Thanks. He drops Thanks. it into reverse going down the road. Bing! Sheared all it off. Well, it wasn't hard to fix. All I had to do was pop that gear off and stick another one on there and clean all that metal out. He had to reverse again. I mean, it's fairly easy to fix it. But I'm telling you, that was really hairy. I never seen him do that before. He got that thing in reverse somehow. You know, I mean, it must have just slid right in there or something. But uh, anyway, shifting problem. Erratic noises. Transaxle gears clash with shifting. That's something you need to look into. Transaxle won't shift into one gear. All others are right. Now, on these other ones and these these transmissions that uh, you know, I told you how these RX7 Mazdas and all these other transmissions that are rear wheel drive, like the linear one I'm getting ready to show you. You go first, second, third, fourth. It's noisy in every gear except fourth. That means that input shaft bearing is bad because there's no load on that bearing when you're in fourth. It's just going straight through. You got me? All right. Transmission shifts hard, transaction shifter walks out of gear, jumps out. Boom! You ever had one do that? My truck does it all the time. Really? Uh, what? Uh, you got a manual transmission in one of your trucks? My, in my Dodge out there, I'll be going over some bumps or something, but I hit one just right, it'll hop in neutral from there. Yeah, well, yeah, that's probably because you got some mounts and it's actually working. <laughs> okay. It's locked in gear and cannot be shifted out of gear. Noisy and forward gear. Hey, we got a relay. That's you. Give that relay to that uh, big old country boy out there. Okay. All right. And I'm going to sign these tickets. Wow. I guess that's all of them. I got three with lands on it and one with no land. I guess that's relay. Hey, did Clay talk to you? Huh? Not yet. Not yet. All right, put that on that one. Yes, you see I'll see. Thank you. Okay, transaxle noisy in forward gears and noisy in neutral. You got there's a troubleshooting table and all that. Okay, let me pull the trigger on this thing and see where we're headed. Here we go. Improper clutch disengagement, external shift mechanism binding. Anybody ever tries to pull the transmission in with bolts or liable to bend the pressure plate and cause it to be dragging all the time? Uh, See all that stuff? You got that on your handout. Don't look, I mean, don't look, I'm going to go through every one of these words because it would bore us all the tears. But you can look and tell if you've got something that you're trying to figure out. That will help you. you, you this is something, there's some things I kept on my clipboard for years when I was working at the dealership. And that was one of them. Now then, what I want to do. Hmm. All right, let me, uh, that, uh, let me see one of your tests. Let me see a test that you got here. Let me see which, let me, somebody hand me your desk. Let me see which one it is. Okay, five speed manual transaxle handout. Okay, I got you. I got you. All right, take that back. Okay. All right, I had hyperlinked the wrong one, that's what it was. And that is test seven. Right? The engine drives the nation. Make sure I'm in the right place so I don't be silly. All right, here we go. Now, opening that up. Here we go. Uh, technician A says transaxle leaks can be caused by using the wrong type of lubricant. Technician B says fluid on lower case surfaces may or may not be leaking from the transaxle. Both of those people are right. If you've got fluid on the lower case surfaces, then it may be may or may not be leaking because it can be running from above. Technician A says each bearing that will be reused should be kept with its original race. Technician B says roller bearing shim should be installed under the bearing cones. Well, what's the difference between a cone and a cup when you're talking about a roller bearing? Do you remember the, the bearings that you just packed on the rotors? The part that's got the rollers is the cone and the bearing race that's in the rotor is the, is the cup. And in some cases, the cone and the cup don't even come together. Mm -hmm. 
Now, sometimes they come together, but in some cases they don't. All right. So technician A is right. Technician B is not. Because those shims go underneath the cone. I mean, the cup, they don't go under the cone. They go, you know, between the housing and the cup. The engine drives the main shaft. Oh, no, the manual drive. Huh? That's true. What's the first step that should be performed when diagnosing a problem? Road test the vehicle. In this particular transaxle, what type of bearings are used? I can't see a picture. The ones we were just talking about. Oh. Opposed tapered roller bearings. I would not guess that. Technician A says an improperly installed shifter boot can cause the transaxle to jump out of gear. What do you think? Can it jump out of gear because the shifter boot's not installed? Right. <coughs> Uh, I mean, it might cause it to hang. It'll, it'll make it, it can pull it out of gear. If it's tight and it's pulling on that yeah. shifter, it can make it jump out of some gears. Uh, if, it's, if it's not installed right. Technician B right. says neutral gear rollover noise in a transaxle indicates problems with the gear train, and some of the transaxle components will need replacing. Oh. He oh. is dead wrong because you're going to hear rollover in just about every manual transaxle. Yeah, yeah, technician A says the throwout bearing in this transaxle should not be in contact with the clutch release fingers on the transaxle unless the clutch is depressed. Now, the ones that are hydraulic that have that concentric one, they stay in contact with it all the time. Uh, the ones that have the fork that pushes them, no, they're not. They're not supposed to. Technician B says a faulty throwout bearing on this transaxle will, uh, will can <laughs> make noise regardless of whether or not the clutch pedal is pressed. That's going to be B there. Uh, transaxle uses high point gear lubricant. What's high point gears? That's the rear end in the back. Whenever you've got a gear that's coming in above or below the center line of the ring gear it's driving, those are high point gears. And that uses that heavy duty thick oil. This uses manual, I mean, automatic transmission fluid. Okay. Now then. All right, now then.